Hi everyone, welcome to Modern Optimization Methods. Today we will take a look at the third part of Chapter 5, the Conjugate Gradient Method. Now, let's recall that the Conjugate Direction Method. So the Conjugate Direction Method basically takes the line search strategy and with the search direction as a conjugate direction. So the conjugate gradient method actually is related to gradient information. Now let's take a look at the update formula. In conjugate gradient method, the search direction is generated by the following formula. We got the search direction PK, which is a linear combination of the two parts. The first part is the steepest descent direction also referred as the residual function, and the second part is the previous conjugate direction. Okay, so before the previous conjugate direction, we got a coefficient beta k, and beta k takes the following form. The calculation of beta k is actually obtained by taking pk and the previous pk minus 1 to be conjugacy. Then we can easily derive the formula for the coefficient beta k. So in other words, for conjugate gradient method, in <coughs> the search direction pk, we basically combine the gradient direction as well as the previous search direction. Okay, so it's a very simple way, and it has close relationship with the steepest descent method. Moreover, for the starting point, we got the first search direction P0 as the steepest descent direction. In other words, at the very beginning, we choose the conjugate gradient direction as the steepest descent direction. And from the second direction, then we will use the formula here to update and generate the conjugate gradient direction. Okay, so this is the main idea for conjugate method. So the difference between the conjugate gradient method and the conjugate direction method is that in conjugate gradient method, it specifies a very special relationship to generate the conjugate directions. Okay, so this is a difference. Now, let's pr present the previous uh, version of conjugate gradient method, which we call a preliminary version, because in practical calculation, we do not use this version to implement the code. Okay. So this is just a, a bridge between the algorithms to the practical version. Now, let's take a look at the settings and the iterations. So the settings is in the following. We have some initial point x0. This has to be specified before our calculation. And we also have to do some preliminary calculation, for example, the residual function at the starting point, and also the very initial conjugate direction P0, right? So as we mentioned in the previous page, it is specified as the steepest descent direction. And we set the circle K to be zero. Then we start the cycle. So in our update, we first calculate the exact step length. As we mentioned before, in quadratic minimization, which means the line, which means the linear conjugate direction method, we use the exact line search. Okay, so the explicit form of step length is like this. And we replace the gradient actually by the residual function, which are the same actually. And for the second step, then we can generate the next iteration, xk plus 1. Okay, so we got the current iteration xk 
and we move along the search direction PK, which already specified, and also we got step plus alpha K. So we have next generation XK plus one. After that, we need to do some preparations for the next update. For the preparations, it involves that we must have some residual functions at this part, okay? So for the next iteration xk plus 1, now we can calculate its residual. We can save this residual function for our next cycle. And for the coefficient beta k plus 1, it will be used later in this step to generate the next conjugate directions. Okay, so beta k is given as the formula as we specified before, and with the coefficient beta k as well as rk plus 1, then we can generate the next conjugate direction pk plus 1. With the pk plus 1, and we move the iteration as k plus 1, then we come to the cycle here, okay? So we uh, update and so on. Right, so this is the preliminary version of conjugate gradient method. Why we use it as a preliminary version? Because in this algorithm, there are actually a lot of extra computational cost involved. Okay, for example, you got APK here, okay, which is a matrix multiplied by a vector. For such calculation, the computational cost will be O n square order. Okay? And if you count that there are many matrix multiplied by vectors, many such kind of calculations. Okay? So we have to reduce some of them to make it to the lowest computational cost, all right? So below, in the following, we will discuss a refined version, which is actually a practical version of CG method. Now, before that, uh, let's present a theorem about conjugate gradient method, okay? So the assumption is that assume at the kth iteration, the conjugate gradient method haven't reached the optimal solution x star, which means, which means that we have to go on to the next iteration. And under such situation, we have the following four properties holds. Okay? So the four properties are actually uh, not that difficult to understand, and we go through them one by one. So for the first one, it actually means that the current residual RK is orthogonal to all the previous residuals, right? So RK transpose RI is zero for all I from zero until K minus one. It's actually a bit similar as we introduced in the previous part that for conjugate direction method, we have similar properties. However, for that properties, it actually means that the current residual is orthogonal to all the previous conjugate directions. And here it is orthogonal to all the previous residuals. Okay, so this is the difference. And the second result basically means that two subspace, they are coincide with each other. So the first subspace is spanned by all the residuals until the current iteration. And the second subspace is the Krilov space, actually. Uh, we will introduce this later. It's expanded by R0, AR0, until A power K R0, right? So it's also another sort of subspace. We refer this to as a Krilov subspace. And the third item actually means that 
the subspace expand by all the previous conjugate dire directions, they are the same as the Krylov space. Okay, so the three subspace are actually the same one. And the final item actually is the conjugacy property. So all the search directions generated by this way, they are orthogonal or they are conjugate with respect to matrix A. Okay, so it's actually a system of the conjugate gradient method. We will not present the details of the proof for this theorem, but we, I leave you as a homework, all right? And there are some implementations about this result. So firstly, the linearly conjugate properties, okay, as we specified in the first item. And also the residuals, they are mutually orthogonal as we presented in the first item. So finally, it's the definition for Krylov subspace, which is defined as the subspace spanned by vector R0, A R0 until A power K R0. Okay, so it's a typical definition in linear algebra. All right. Based on the above properties, as well as the preliminary version of CG algorithm, below we do a little bit simplification to reduce further the computational cost in the algorithm. All right, so how we do the reduce? Now, let's take a look at the step length. So recall that we have the exact line search by this calculation, and by our property mentioned before, we can replace the calculation of step length by the following formula. And in this formula, the difference lies in the numerator, okay? So in the numerator, originally it was the inner product between the residual function and the coordinate directions. However, in the current, form, it is actually the square norm of RK, okay? So which it means that we can somehow save the computational cost. Another case is that for R for APK, this term, it can be rearranged as the difference of two successive residuals, okay? By this way, we can replace the coefficient beta k plus 1 by the two term here, okay? So until now, the calculation of beta k plus 1 will look very neat, okay? So the numerator here is actually the square norm of rk plus 1, and the denominator here is actually the square norm of rk, right? So which means that once we calculate the square norm of RK, then we can save it and we can use it when we calculate the coefficient here, right? So this will simplify our calculation. We get rid of the matrix multiplied by vector and replace this computational cost by a vector multiplied by a vector, okay? Moreover, we can save the vector result here for future use, okay? Now, based on the simplification, we present the refined version or the practical version of CG method. So the other settings are the same as before. We have initial point, the initial residual functions, as well as the initial conjugate directions. Then, when we calculate the step length alpha, we replace it by the, the numerator all over the denominator, where we go to the square norm of rk involved. And for the xk plus 1 and rk plus 1, it is the same as before, and notice that 
we only need to calculate one matrix multiplied by a vector pk. After that, for the coefficient beta k plus 1, then the calculation of matrix multiplied by vector disappears, and there are only vector multiplied by vector. Okay? So, by the simplification of alpha and beta, then we can further reduce the computational cost in CG method. And actually, this version of CG method is quite popular in real practice. You can download the code from website, and it is public. Now, we have some remarks about the algorithm. So firstly, there is only low storage cost, okay? So to, to do the update for CD method, we only involve two successive iteration informations. For example, you got pk, pk minus 1, beta k, and the residual functions, okay, for these vectors. And we do not need a lot of computational costs. We only need one time matrix by vectors. Then the left are all vector multiplied by vectors, okay? Which saves huge computational costs compared to the previous version. And for small case or for small size of solving linear systems, we may not use the CG method because for small size of CG method, we can use other more efficient ways to solve the solution, such as Gaussian eliminations or other factorization method. However, for large-scale linear systems, we have to use the CG method, okay? Because it saves us a lot of memory cost and computational cost, and it is much faster than traditional methods. And sometimes, in very good situations, the method will also approaches the solution in a very fast iteration number, okay? So this is also another advantage of CG method. Now, let's make a brief summary about this part. In this part, we basically introduce two versions of CG algorithms. One is the preliminary version, another is the reduced version, which is more practical in real applications. Notice here that when you design an algorithm, the computational cost is a very important issue. We do have to analyze the formula and the relations very carefully, trying to reduce the computational cost. Okay? Right, so we stop here and see you next time. Thank you.